You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and happy Freaker Friday, all you freaks out there in the RLM land. You got Grammy Mary here on this Freaker Friday, and yeah, we are blasting off in the rocket chair. And I've been checking out a few things because I've been asked to do a little bit of research, so I'm probably going to be just a skosh cranky this evening. Just warning ya. <laughs> I do have a tendency to, to, yeah, light the fuse from time to time. And, um, but first, before I do that, because, you know, I still got a little bit of time before I got to be a good girl for Santa Claus. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I best say, hey, to everybody. Over here on Fakie Book, I don't see anybody loitering over here that's paying attention at least. Uh, but Gary L. is posting some good stuff and I'm going to get to one of them here in a little bit. That's one of those that just kind of sort of really tripped my trigger, if you know what I mean. Also, over here on this Freedoms Network, I see Grimmy is over here. And uh, I'm here. And looks like Katie Troxell's been sharing some stuff. And so has Bobby. And so I have Jabba Doctor. Hey, 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 hey. How you guys doing? Born to be Wild, the senior citizen version. I'm going to have to check that out, Grim. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I'm not quite senior citizen yet. Because um, you're supposed to be 60, right? <laughs> or 65. or it's It's down the road a ways. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, over here on Minds, I see all kind of people posting all kind of stuff, but that's about it. And you know what? I, uh, hmm, I'm kind of a slacker. I didn't share it. Oops, oops. Let's see if maybe I still got it to where I can. Ooh, no, I don't. Never mind. You know what? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Who's Lemmy? Lemmy Kravitz. That's who it is. I like Lemmy Kravitz. I know it's Lenny. But still, I like Lenny. He can play a mean guitar, let me tell ya. Uh, da, da, da. Rockets are fueled. There we go. And now if I could spell. <laughs> so, okay, that's over there. Over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. I still got 370 stalkers. How in the hell did that happen? Oi. But Barman tweeted me from, um, let's see, from the Effin site and from RLM and from the RLM radio page. And wow, just all kind of places. So wee ha, wee ha. I'm so excited. Other than that, hey, everybody, anybody who's listening in, we are playing on RealLibertyMedia.com Channel 3 and also on the RLM Spreaker Channel. In case, you know, I don't know why I say that out loud because y'all are listening or you're not one of the two. Uh, let's see. What is that? Goober's sharing stuff over here on the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static, by the way, because that's where, oh, cool. That's pretty cool, Goober. Warp speed. Woohoo! Okay, back to the RLM where I need to say hey to everybody. Right up top, I see Barman is there. Who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world? Just got to tell you. Why? Because I said so. That's why. I also see Grimner, who is the creator of Barman, which makes him just pretty god dang splendiferous, too, because he created a pretty cool bot. And looky there, the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate, how's the weather down there? In oh, that's right. You know what? I think Kate might be dining out. I think Kate had an invite to somewhere this evening. I'm going to say hey to her anyway. I also see the lovely Beth Z is in the chat, as well as Chalcedony. And the lovely Circles is logged in. I don't know that she's listening in. She's probably sleeping because it's dark 30 now. 
And look, there's only a single dipping of Chloe in the chat. What the hey, Chloe? You being a slacker? I'm here, as well as I be Don C and Java, 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 Doctor 2. And looky there, JJ's is in the house, as well as Juana Taco, closely followed by Mr. Asmodeus, who's probably sleeping, but ah. He's still logged in. I also see Rain, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. There's Rob Works showing up in the chat. Hey, Rob, where's the poplar? Huh? And that trusty feller is here. He's going to be a Bitcoin bazillionaire. I just know it. And looky there, Colfax 101. And, and hey, Poxified is even playing along. Dude, bridge of size. <sighs> okay. Um, Dakota up there in the great white north, and it's probably quite white right about now. And Dima is in the house, as well as Flash Nasty and Frumped and Frumpy. Well, Frumped and Frumpy. I wonder what it's like to be Frumped. No, I don't want to wander that far. I might get lost. Hey, Gooberzilla, I see you sharing stuff, too. That was a way cool Star Trek thing. GIF. Whatever. That that was cool. Of course, I'm kind of weird. I like that cool shit. <laughs> I also see Kozu is in the house, as well as Mmmbot. And there's Motley Alaskan. You know, Motley, I watched a video done by a gentleman who lives up in Haines, Alaska, the other day and really quite fascinating about grounding that was got me started doing a lot of research and on that too and that's one of the few things that was really cool that I researched in the last few days I also see poxified is here saying hey there hi there ho there and making requests and looky there pop upon sauces in the house or at least logged in but marked away and Teddy hi Teddy how you doing I just can't help but say that in a nice way because it's Teddy. It makes me think of a teddy bear. I refuse to think of Teddy the Whaler Kennedy. Mm, moving along. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom. Thank you, Phantom, once again for the amazing intro. I truly appreciate it. Uh, what is this frumped that you are sharing? Another warped speed? What? Oh, that's just awesome. Sweet. <laughs> I've been uh yeah, I've been check I've been clicking on links that my sisters have been posting of late. And uh one of them was of Oh, hi there soul filing cabinets. How are you doing, sweetheart? I see you over here on Twitter. Hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous freaker Friday. My Friday was somewhat freaky, but that's okay. It went a lot faster that way. Uh, da, 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 da. Who do what? Huh? Hmm? Priest urges Christians. Pr oh, yeah. I remember reading that about a week or so ago, Grim. Yeah, that's real Christian of him, don't you think? Yeah, let's pray that he turns gay so that they can't... Wait a minute. So that they can't continue the lineage. You know, there's really not... There is an upside. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think that's a very Christian thing for that priest to be urging, but mm, there are upsides to everything. You just got to kind of look at sometimes in a rather contorted and warped way, which I have a tendency to do from time to time. Okay, let's see. First one, I got to get to this from Gary L. It is from over on clickorlando.com. Woman, 93, arrested for not paying rent. Oh, I would love to say only in Florida, but obviously it's not just Florida that does dumb shit like that. <clears throat> Eustace police arrested a 93-year-old woman accused of trespassing after the independent living facility in which she lived reported that she had refused to pay rent for the past three months. Juanita Fitzgerald, 93, has a birthday coming up Friday, and she was held in the Lake County Jail on a $500 bond and has since, or has been there since Tuesday. Fitzgerald was released on Thursday on her own recognizance, said the Lake County Sheriff's spokesperson. 
Fitzgerald did not pay bond, but must appear on December 27th court appearance. Karen Twinham, with National Church Residences, which owns the Franklin House, where Fitzgerald has lived since April of 2011, said that Fitzgerald told staff she held back the rent because she thought she was going to die soon. Well, kind of hard to argue with that one, except you're still here, honey. Twinman also confirmed that Fitzgerald also had complained about having mold in her apartment, but said the facility um, had her apartment tested and no mold was found. Okay. She said that officials contacted the 93-year-old woman's family several times to try to get her help and even reached out to several agencies, including the Homeless Coalition, Livestream Behavior Center, the United Way of Lake County, which United Way, are you kidding me? 3% of what you donate to the United Way actually goes to any kind of charitable deeds. The rest gets eaten up in advertising to get you to donate to the United Way or administrative costs. Isn't that wonderful? Also, Family Service or Family and Children's Services of Lake County, the Air, um, Area Agency on Aging, and several other apartments and transitional housing programs. Twinham said that Fitzgerald refused all the assistance offered. Hmm. I feel like everything was done that could possibly be done to help her. I feel a lot of it was brought on herself, Franklin House resident Terry Goldberg said of Fitzgerald. The court papers described Fitzgerald or described how she resisted the eviction every step of the way, which I wonder if the gal has just a wee bit of senility issues as well. I mean, 93, you know, that's got to be considered. When Eustace police officers arrived at the Franklin House, they met with Lake County deputies inside the front lobby, and Fitzgerald was there, according to court papers. The report states that on the previous day, Fitzgerald was made well aware that she would be evicted and was asked several times to leave the property and told she could no longer stay there. Fitzgerald refused to get her belongings and leave and said, unless you carry me out of here, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Okay. As officers attempted to escort her out of the building, she intentionally slid out of her chair and onto the floor and resisted when officers tried to pick her up, the report says. Now, this is what the report says. But I've also seen a video earlier today that was closed caption video of some police officers that said she ar she resisted arrest. They even charged her with felony resisting arrest. Now they're getting federal charges against like six or seven of them. And they're being sued because, yeah, she was not resisting, but the report said she was. So, yeah, whenever it says the report says, I tend to question just a wee bit. The affidavit states that the officers were able to safely escort her out of the building into the rear of a patrol car. Due to her age, officers transported Fitzgerald without handcuffs to reduce the risk of injury. This is extremely rare, said Twinham, who said that the National Church Residences runs 340 properties, and we try to find places for people. Apparently, News 6 investigator Adriana Irwazinski asked for a jailhouse interview with Fitzgerald on Wednesday and w was granted her request. So, yeah, there is a little bit of a video here. Dressed in her orange jump jail jumpsuit with bruises on her arms and handcuffs around her wrists, Fitzgerald was deni or denied the allegations that she didn't pay rent because she thought she was going to die soon. I don't have anybody. My family's in Tennessee, and I told them not to tell my son anything that's going on. Mm, you know, I feel bad for her, but damn it, people. Damn it. You know, if you're renting, you really do need to, especially if you got the funds, you really do need to pay the rent. Don't try and make it to sound like somebody else is a bad guy. Because you ain't paying rent. 
<sighs> and the reason I'm acting like this is because I, I know people that do this shit. And it's like, God dang it. Don't be doing this sob story crap. Trying to get people to feel sorry for you when you brought it on yourself. Apparently, Fitzgerald also said she tried to pay rent in October and was refused. Oh, okay. She said the Franklin House offered her assistance and tried to find her another home, but she refused and has refused help from her own family. See, when you refuse help from someone, that's... Mm -hmm. I don't want them to help me. I don't need no help. I've got all the help I need, she said, pointing to the sky. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Bless your heart, darling. I hate to see 93-year-old women in handcuffs. And that just, that really, really chapped my ass when I saw that. But you know, that's one of those things. That's what they do. They get you triggered, get you in the feels. And they got me in the feels. I got to admit that. But darling, when you have all the help that you need and you have faith in the big man upstairs or however you want to look at it, Sweetheart, part of that is that he gave you a brain that's functioning, you know, and and he or she, whatever, made this wonderful planet with all of these wonderful things that, um, you know, can can make your life better. You know, you can go out. There's foods that are healthy for you. There's there's people out there that are trying to help you. There's um, you know, go out and ground. Hey, Moose Girl, I see you. But damn it, sitting there pissing and moaning and groaning and then saying, I got all the help I need and pointing up towards the sky. He's not going to come pay you rent, honey. It doesn't work that way. It really does. I don't care how many preachers you listen to and they tell you, but God needs a satellite TV. No, God does not because God can see everything you're doing without any kind of wiring whatsoever. Die. Fitzgerald will not spend her 94th birthday in jail. That's a good thing. But we'll be staying with a friend after leaving the Lake County Detention Center, which I hope this friend kind of talks some sense into her. And I really think she needs to be checked. I think she just might have a wee bit of dementia going on. I mean, I feel bad, but not bad enough to go, damn it, darling, you brought this shit on yourself. Ugh. I hate, I hate seeing, and you know, they're talking about her having bruises and stuff. Okay, my mother is 86 years old, and you look at her wrong, and she develops a bruise. So, putting that out there as well. Mm. Damn it. You know, there's just not a pretty side to this story. I just plain can't. Okay, I lied earlier. I'm having a really hard time finding a good side to that story. There ain't one. Damn it, woman. Damn it. Okay. So, I'm going to go to... Yes. Check out Twitter one more time before I get the close it down. Because sure as shit. Oh, hey, there's weed. Wee the 420 Weed Club just shared something way cool. I think I'm going to have to post that in the RLM chat. That looks, that looks like it's something really, it's like a menorah of weed. <laughs> How cool is that? You can really celebrate. Hey. Or not. I mean, you better have lots of munchies around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely a puff, puff, pass moment. Wow. <laughs> I'm distracted. Sorry. Okay. Oh, shit. Now they're talking about Trump. I got to close Twitter. Ugh. Can only take so much of that shit. Okay. Um, I better put this over on this effing site. Real fast. Whilst I'm kind of... See, now that took the whole... Grr. Because, yeah, I just want to... I just want to talk to Grandma and... And growl at the cops and growl at the... <clears throat> but Grandma, honey... 
Accept some help. Sheesh. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to my pocket because I have a few things here that are going to... Well, let's go with this one first. I think Rob Work shared this over on the RLM. Um, not too long before I left work, actually. It is from blacklistednews.com. And it's from today. Conspiracy theorists were right. Corporate media finally forced to admit America armed ISIS. Although I noticed, some, I did peruse it a little bit. Normally don't do that, but I did peruse this one just a skosh. And I noticed they've changed the name a, a little bit. That's to kind of get you to where you don't make the connection. Sorry, we do. While mainstream media opted to protect the United States government from treating anyone who dared to question the government's role in the rise of ISIS as crazy conspiracy theorists, a new report is forcing the MSM, corporate lame-ass propaganda system if you ask Grimmy and me, to admit that those conspiracies were true all along. And you know, in order for something to be a conspiracy, all you got to do is have two, at minimum of two people conspiring together to cause something to happen. And if you notice it, then yeah, you are seeing a conspiracy. And it's not, stop calling it a conspiracy theorist. They are conspiracy factualists. There is a factual conspiracy going on here. Now, the mainstream media outlets such as Reuters and USA Today are suddenly reporting that the United States and its close ally, Saudi Arabia, were instrumental in supplying weapons and ammunition to ISIS. Both reports cite an investigation conducted by Conflict um, Affirmament Research, or CAR, Vroom, vroom. which looked at 40,000 items recovered from Islamic State militants between July of 2014 and November of 2017. A final report from Carr titled Weapons of the Islamic State concluded that the vast majority of the weapons used by ISIS were supplied in the thousands given their origin and the fact that they were found in numbers far beyond those that would have been available to the group through battlefield capture alone. More than 95% or 97% of the weapons and 87% of the ammunition used by ISIS were Warsaw Pact calibers originally or originating primarily in China, Russia, and Eastern Europe producer states according to the report. However, the weapons were not distributed to the militants by China or Russia. Ah, oh, damn it, we can't blame those damn communist pinkos. Shit. The weapons and ammunition were originally purchased by the United States and Saudi Arabia and then distributed to rebel groups opposing the administration of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Huh. While the U.S. claimed to be fighting ISIS, the fact is that ISIS was one of the Syrian rebel groups opposing Assad. And, as the report noted, nearly all of their weapons came from those purchased by USA and Saudi Arabia. Huh. Shock, shock, shock. Unauthorized tra uh, retransfer, the violation of agreements by which a supplier government prohibits the re-export of material by a recipient government without its prior consent, is a significant source of Islamic State weapons and ammunition. Now they have IS as opposed to ISIS. Why? Because they want you to make that mental distinction, but it's the same thing. The United States and Saudi Arabia supplied most of those materials without authorization. Oh, so if they would have gotten the okay, then it would have been cool, but you're just pissed because they didn't ask permission first. Is that how this works? Hmm. Apparently they were um, to the Syrian opposition forces. Well... 
this diverted material recovered from IS forces compromises exclusively Warsaw Pact caliber weapons and ammunition purchased by the United States and Saudi Arabia from European Union member states in Eastern European. So, in other words, there ain't anybody that ha doesn't have dirty hands in this mess. Hello? While the report claims that many of the weapons were intended for other Syrian rebel groups before they ended up in the hands of ISIS militants, it also notes how quickly the transition between groups happened after the weapons were originally supplied. Apparently, somebody was being a good little middleman during all of this shit. In one case, an advanced anti-tank guided weapon was manufactured in the EU, sold to the United States, supplied to a party in the Syrian conflict, transferred to the ISIS forces in Iraq, not just Islamic State, and documented by a car field investigation team following its recovery from Islamic State forces. The report noted that the full chain of transactions occurred within two months of the weapons dispatch from the factory. I'm thinking, you know, they didn't learn anything from what what was the shit that went on here that we wound up having a border agent or an ICE agent get killed. Um, oh, is it Fast and Furious or something like that? One of them dangleberry things. Obviously, they haven't learned the serial numbers on the weapons were also crucial in determining how the militants acquired them. According to the report, almost half of the weapons that were investigated featured serial numbers that are close in sequence to those of other identical weapons in the sample. So in other words, they got them in bulk because you get a better price. It's a much better bargain. As a result, they found at least 240 sets of weapons that were manufactured in the same production run and probably exported in the same or successive batches, which suggests that in some cases the weapons were delivered to the militants by the thousands. Hello? Hello? Okay, that's enough of this shit. I'm going to let you guys finish reading this, because this is just... And there's all these people. Oh, someone killed an ice hole? Yes. You know how you know how you catch a polar bear, Grimmy? I hear that there's lots and lots of polar bears lately. Um, You know, as in, you know, they're concerned because now there's too many polar bears. So you know how you catch one? You go and you... you cut a big hole in the ice and then you take a can of peas and you open it and you sprinkle those peas all around the outside of that hole and when a polar bear comes up to take a pea you kick it in the ice hole budding bump bump <laughs> I told that one to my grandkids and they laughed and my daughter glared and I laughed <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, see how easy it is for me to get distracted. <laughs> Just mention an ice hole and I start seeing polar bears. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to put this over here on this effing site as well. Yeah. It's for This is for those that have not been paying attention and just don't understand that, yeah, our government's a bunch of shitheads. Lion shitheads, no less. <sighs> Great. I'll just put this over here on mines as well. Seeing as how I'm being cranky. Put that out there. Okay. So, now that I've as conspiracy factualists, I refuse to say we're conspiracy theorists anymore. We are conspiracy factualists. There you go. Okay, here's another one, and I 
this one I also swiped from Robworks over um, in the RLM earlier today. Just another one of those propagandists and Fibber McGee's and all that other fun shit. It's like, really? You assholes. Assholios. Ooh, good job, Poxified. You got the duck. Duck, 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 duck. Okay, from uh, naturalblaze.com, FOIA docs show that FDA's data on Kratom deaths is complete propaganda. No, say it isn't so. I'm shocked. As the FDA fearmongers over alleged Kratom or Kratom or however you say that associated deaths documents on these deaths reveal that the American people are being lied to. Last month, Scott Gottlieb, commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, issued a public health advisory on Kratom, outlining concerns about its deadly risks. You know, like that devil salad, demon weed, that nasty shit. However, Nick Wing, a senior reporter at the Huff Post, submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the Food and Drug Administration to put a second set of eyes on these alleged deadly associations. What the FDA re uh, released under the FOIA request is now raising serious concerns about the validity and perhaps the motive for this senseless government fear-mongering. Huh. Well, the motive is control and money and cutting into big pharma profits and since most of the people that are the higher ups at the FDA either came from big pharma or are trying to schmooze enough to get a peach of a job at big pharma yeah follow the money in their report the FDA cited 36 deaths associated with the use of Kratom but the data they released to HuffPo showed only eight and of these eight reports not a single one confirmed a death caused by kratom now they possibly had that in their system possibly and you know kind of like the ones that they have tried to say that weed had caused this person to die of a deadly weed overdose well you know if there was some kind of infraction going on and possibly this person started out smoking some pot and then they went and they took some black Bettys or whatever I don't know white crosses I don't know what the hell they do nowadays I haven't touched that shit in forever like really seriously <laughs> forever it seems like um, you know but they may have done something else besides just the weed possibly even had some beer or some whiskey God only knows what some people will do but they focus on the weed because it must have been that demon weed that got them to do whatever it is that they did mm-hmm yeah as Wing noted, they requested all records on Kratom-associated deaths since 2010. All the incidents turned over to the Huffington Post appeared to have been submitted through the FAERS, or the FDA's Adverse Event Reporting System. An adverse event. Hmm, is that what they call it when someone, like, overdoses on opiates or some shit like that? It was an adverse event. It was not intended the way it worked, turned out. Darn. Some of the data the FDA used to issue their warning over the deadly risks associated with Kratom use would be laughable if they weren't going to be used to take this beneficial plant away from the countless people whose lives it saved by stopping their opioid addictions. See? There you go, cutting into the profits of Big Pharma. The report below shows how entirely absent of any real data the FDA's claims are. My son died after consuming Kratom, received on Friday, and died on Sunday. Prepared as a tea, read the report. Really? Hmm. Hmm. How interesting. 
Apparently, the, and there's tweets up there, but uh, the examples show absolutely no evidence of Kratom caused this young man's death, merely hearsay. But it does get worse. The FDA, <clears throat> excuse me, used these reports to associate death with Kratom despite the far more life-threatening conditions contained in them. Huh. Huh. In other words, this individual was in really bad shape. And they just happened to be using this, but it just wasn't going to work for them. Mm. For those that don't know, agencies in Europe have just recommended moving tramadol to a much more dangerous drug classification because of the sharp increase in the painkillers association with death. Huh. Oh, but we can't have you focusing on something that's coming out from Big Pharma. You must focus on these other things that are not being put out by Big Pharma because they're natural. Mm-hmm. Or Mother Nature made, let's say. Apparently, over the past number of years, there's been a significant rise in the number of deaths linked to tramadol. There's been more deaths from tramadol than any other drug at the present time. That's from state pathologist Professor Jack Crane. He told this to the court in Northern Ireland earlier this year. What's more, <clears throat> excuse me, is that the doctors filing these reports are clearly trying to shift blame in spite of other underlying health problems and taking other prescription medications. As Wing notes, here's another from the wife of a man who died of a seizure. Medical examiner amended cause of death to toxic effects of mitrogenin, whatever the hell that is, even though the husband had a history of seizures and was taking dilantin, uh -huh, an anticonvulsant, to treat them and obviously if he was still having seizures that anticonvulsant wasn't working it gets worse though because a 63 year old man on multiple prescription meds who smoked for 40 years had a heart attack despite cigarettes being the number one cause of preventable death in the United States his death was attributed to Kratom why because they could get away with it. And that's what they do. They take those numbers and they tweak that shit. You know, it's just like I've said several times, you know, when they say that you're twice as likely to die of lung disease or heart attack if you smoke cigarettes, the way they came up with that, and this is years and years and years ago, I read the, I don't can't even remember the magazine I read it in because it was pre-internet shit. The way they came up with that is they had a hundred people that didn't smoke and a hundred people that did smoke. And in the hundred people that didn't smoke, one person out of that hundred people during this time frame died of lung cancer. But in the hundred people that did smoke, two people died from lung cancer. Therefore, you're twice as likely. They don't give you all of the numbers. They just use it in order to scare you. Not saying cigarettes are good for you, but please, 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 always check that data. Don't just take what they're spewing. If, if you want to just take what they're spewing, then you got to just look at things a little bit off to the side. They say 23% of all automobile fatalities are caused by drunk drivers. That means 77% of the people that cause those automobile fatalities were not drinking. Hmm. Does that mean it's okay to drink and drive? No. But it means pay attention to the numbers. And don't just take their shit for granted. Because odds are, they've got an agenda to push. Aye. Okay. 
Best one gets to be president. Who gets to be president? I don't want to be president. Oh, I would like to be president just for... Hey, Flasher! About the time I was captain of a septic tanker, um, I was in a little rowboat and I lost the oars when I was going down shit crit. <laughs> yeah, Grimmy, they do recommend Lucky Strike. And Paul Malls. Did you notice? They smoked a lot of Paul Malls or Camel Filterless. Yeah. I remember some of them. Okay. So, now that I've done that one, and I'll put this over on the effing site as well, just because, you know, the assholios, they always have a version they wish you to pay attention to. Not necessarily what's actually going on. But hey, you know, they're the ones that are trying to, they're trying to do what's best for you. Trust them. Now, <laughs> let's get to another fun one, shall we? Yeah. How about canola oil? I saw a video about canola oil the other day, and I thought, okay, okay. And it was from, um, I don't remember if it was from the Health Ranger or what, but someone had shared it over on Fakie Book, And I thought, okay, well, <clears throat> I stopped using canola oil quite a while ago, um, like several years ago. Um, I think I only used it for a very small time, actually. Oops, what? Huh? What did I do? Doctors prescribe healthy cigarette brands. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, Vinny, I see you. Um, from Throwback Thursday. Okay, I'm going to open up that one too, but I want to get to this canola oil one because... A former classmate, I had shared that video and said that I was going to do some more looking into that. And she said, she actually responded, very rarely does she respond to anything I put on fakey, but, but she responded to that and asked if I would look into it some more and let her know what I found. So, I just did a DuckDuckGo search and it was like, there is a plethora of shit about canola oil. It's not, it's not good stuff. It really isn't. And uh, I kind of tried to decide which article I wanted to go with first. And then I thought, oh, okay, let's do this Dr. Axe one, where food is medicine, which, yes, food is medicine. And the title of it is Stop Using can Canola Oil Immediately. There are six canola oil dangers that he lists here. So, when it comes to canola oil, some people view it as a healthy food, while others avoid it at all costs. When there are two extremely passionate viewpoints, it can be very challenging to get to the bottom of it all. On the one hand, detractors claim that canola oil is completely toxic, contains the infamous chemical warfare agent mustard gas, and causes everything from mad cow disease to blindness. Huh, so there's, okay, moving along. My mind went somewhere else, and it really shouldn't. On the other hand, supporters believe that canola oil is one of the healthiest oils on the planet because it's rich in omega-3s, low in saturated fat, and is a good source of oleic acid. Granted, these properties are true on the surface, but there is much more to the canola story. It's a genetically modified product. That alone made me go, no thanks. Canola is a Canadian invention, thanks Canucks, that's backed by Canada's government. Cheap to manufacture, and many packaged or processed foods contain it. Canola oil was first created in the early 1970s as a natural oil, but in 1995, dun dun dun, Monsatan created a genetically modified version of canola oil. 
As of 2005, 87% of canola grown in the U.S. was genetically modified. And by 2009, 90% of the Canadian crop was genetically engineered. Now, if you don't remember when I explained to you the difference between genetic modification and hybridization or crossbreeding, genetic modification is when they do things that there is no way it will occur in nature. That's genetic modification. That's basically the difference because hybridization is taking two of a same type, you know, like two different tomato plants and crossbreeding them, hybridizing them. But genetic modification is completely different. So, with many, so many oils on the market and so much talk about the different types of oil, it's difficult to sift through what's fact, what's entirely fiction, and most of all, which is the healthiest oil to use. I want to explain all the reasons why canola is not what you want to add to your shopping cart. From genetic modification to an overload of unhealthy fats, plus better alternatives and resources to help you avoid GMOs across the board. So here we go. Canola oil is rapeseed oil. Now the name alone should be enough to make you go, no thanks. It's made from the rapeseed plant, specifically from the seeds of the rape or rapeseed plant, which is a member of the mustard family. It was in the early 1970s that canola was first bred from rapeseed at the University of Manitoba in Canada by Keith Downey and Balder R. Stephenson. In 1998, the most disease and drought resistant canola virus variety to date was developed using genetic modification. And this is how the majority of recent varieties are produced. Rapeseed oil and canola oil are often used interchangeably. Wild rapeseed oil contains large amounts of um, a year, a year sick. Eursic, E-R-U-C-I-C, -I, -C, I have no idea how to pronounce that, acid, which is known to cause health problems. So the canola plant was developed from rapeseed in order to use it to produce a food grade canola oil with a lower level of the eursic acid, whatever that word is. The name of canola oil was originally Lear or low Eursic acid rapeseed. Great. You're going to leer at the rapeseed. Ick. But for market purposes was changed to canola oil. Ah, because that sounds so healthy, sounds so wholesome, sounds so wonderful. Just rolls off your tongue as opposed to the eursic, whatever the hell that is. This word was derived from the combination of Canada and Ola, meaning oil. So, ha, ah, can Ola. Oh, how clever. Canola oil is a much more appealing name than Lear oil or rape oil. But, should you use it for your foods? Uh -uh. Canola oil works well as an industrial oil. Great. It has been used in candles, soaps, lipstick, lubricants, inks, biofuels, and even insecticides. Yummy! Although I do have to say, spiders do not like peppermint oil, and I like peppermint oil. So, there you go. Once the powers that be figured out how to genetically modify rapeseed oil, it began being sold as an edible food product. Hence, it's been brought to market with the claim that it's a wonder oil, low in saturated fats and a source of omega-3 fatty acids. But in its current hybridized and modified state, it can cause a large number of health issues that you will learn about here in just a sec. So why is it bad for you? 
Well, originally rapeseed oil may not have had so many negative health effects, but for two main reasons. Most canola oil today can be very harmful to your body. Over 90% of canola oil is genetically modified. And canola oil is a refined oil that's often partially hydrogenated to increase its stability, but this increases its negative health effects. It's for those two reasons that I recommend you switch to a healthier oil alternative. Um, so what can it do to you? Well, there have been no long-term viable studies done on GMO canola oil, but there are reports that it has caused many kidney, liver, and neurological health issues. This makes sense since there are other reports that GMO products like corn and soy also can cause negative health effects. And according to Weston A. Price Foundation and fat experts Sally Fallon and Mary Enig, like all modern vegetable oils, canola oil goes through the process of refining, bleaching, and degumming. Oh, God. Yuck. That right there. Ugh. You had me at degumming. Well, actually, at bleaching. And then degumming. Ew all of which involve high temperatures and chemicals of questionable safety. I like how they put that. And because canola oil is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which easily become rancid and foul-smelling when subjected to oxygen and high temperatures, it must be deodorized. Great! So you got deodorants put in there as well. Yummy! The standard deodorization process removes a large portion of the omega-3 fatty acids by turning them into trans fatty acids. Although the Canadian government lists the trans content, oh, oh, they're going after trans. Uh-oh, I'm going to be in trouble. They list the trans contents of canola at a minimal of 0.2%. Research at the University of Florida at Gainesville found trans levels as high as 4.6% in the liquid, commercial liquid oil. The consumer has no clue about the presence of trans fatty acids in canola oil because they're not listed on the label. Huh. Imagine that. Monsatan has been incorporating genetically modified organisms in its canola oil seeds, and now we know that Monsatan has also been selling GMO seeds for the following plants. Canola, alfalfa, cotton, corn, cotton, soybeans, sorghum, sugar beets, and wheat. Well, that just pretty much makes you not want to eat any kind of grain, doesn't it? Sugar beets even, you bastards. In 2016, some progress has been made when it comes to food containing genetically modified ingredients. A bill was signed by the president amending the Agricultural Marketing Act of 1946. So now companies are required by law to disclose the presence of GMO ingredients through text labels, symbols, or digital links like scannable QR codes. It all sounds great, but the problem is that it's left up to the Secretary of the Agriculture to decide what amounts of GMO ingredients need to be present in a food product in order for the GMO labeling law to be a requirement. And see, what they don't take into account is how many different things have that shit in them. So each ingredient or each different product may be below that level, but when you start adding product upon product upon product upon product, and you have three or four of those products in one meal, you're screwed. So, the dangers of canola oil. Yay. Number one, kidney and liver problems. The majority of canola oil produced today is genetically modified, and the side effects of GMOs in general cannot be overstated. 
In a 2011 review published in the Environmental Sciences Europe, 19 studies of mammals fed GMO soybean and corn were evaluated. The 90-day trials indicated liver and kidney problems as a result of GMO foods. The kidney and liver findings actually were differentiated by sex, with the kidneys being disrupted by 43.5% of male mammals and the liver being disrupted in female mammals by 30.8%. The kidneys and liver are absolutely vital to our existence, so ingesting a genetically modified food like canola oil is really not something to take lightly. And please, people, especially a lot of people that like, you know, make kidney pie, or those of us that like liver and onions, you know, stuff like that, what you are what you eat, and it does get passed on in the food chain. I don't give a shit what they say. It does get passed on. Number two, life-threatening heart trouble. As a monounsaturated oil, rapeseed oil has high levels of the euric or eursic acid, however you say that, and it's a fatty acid that's associated with heart damage, specifically Keishan disease. It's a disease that manifests itself with fibrotic lesions on the heart. And studies have shown that in areas where people are prone to Keishan, not only are selenium levels lower, but uricic acid levels are higher. And by the way, ladies, please take selenium, please, 200 micrograms a day selenium get you some good good quality selenium but um, that's as a preventative for breast cancer issues plus it you know it's just it's good for your body anyway your body needs it so please ladies definitely especially ladies men you could take it too but especially ladies you know keep the girls healthy to go on with this, partially hydrogenated vegetable oils like canola oil, which I don't know how you can call that a vegetable oil. It's not from a vegetable. But in any case, uh, canola oils are also known for causing inflammation and calcification of arteries, which are well-established risk, risk factors for coronary heart disease. Also, another thing, off on a tangent again. Grounding is supposed to be some, there is some, some studies out there and it's, um, oh, I can't remember his first name, Dr. Sinatra, who is a uh, cardiologist who has uh, done some studies on grounding or earthing, however you wish to put that, uh, where when you do that regularly, like minimum of 20 minutes a day, minimum of 20 minutes a day. It reduces inflammation in the body and inflammation is what causes most if not all dis-ease in the body. So just a little point to ponder. One of those lovely little fun things I was researching. Number three, hypertension and strokes. Previous studies have shown that the consumption of rapeseed oil and some other types of vegetable oil shortens the lifespan of stroke-prone and hypertensive animal subjects. Specifically, research carried out at the Nutrition and Toxicology Research Divisions of Ottawa discovered that rats bred to have high blood pressure and proneness to stroke died sooner when fed canola oil as the sole source of fat. Additionally, of course, you know, anytime these do, they do these studies, got to let you know, when they do this shit, they overdo this shit. They basically feed these critters 200 times more than what an, the average human will consume in a lifetime. Got to put that out there, too. Additionally, the rats fed the non-canola oil-based diets lived longer than the rats fed canola oil. You dirty rats. Another study published in 2000 in Toxicology Letters specifically looked at the effects of canola oil on blood coagulation time or how long it takes blood to clot in a stroke 
prone animal subjects. The study found that there was a canola oil induced shortening of blood coagulation time and increased fragility, which may promote the occurrence of strokes in animal, subject, animal subjects that are prone to strokes. Number four, may retard normal growth. Okay, I've been accused of being a retard a time or two, but, and I am short, but then again, I think that's normal for my family. So up until recently, it was not legal to use canola oil in infant formula. <laughs> until recently, they put that in there, great. There have been what I think are valid concerns about canola oil retarding growth in children. Specifically, this acid that's in canola oil is harmful to infants due to an inability to properly break it down. The FDA previously made the use of canola oil illegal in baby formula. However, as of a few years ago, canola oil made it to the generally recognized as safe list. I wonder whose palms got oiled. Huh. Not only is it highly concerning to feed developing infants a GMO oil, but it's also highly questionable to give them unhealthy fats. Proponents brag about canola's overall healthy fat profile, but I don't buy it. Now it's being sold in the form of a baby's first meal. Of course, I highly encourage skipping the commercial formulas and opting for breastfeeding, which I do too. Thank you, Dr. Axe, for agreeing with me. Or if necessary, homemade baby formula, which my youngest drank my dry. <laughs> and she basically got whole milk with a little bit of corn syrup. Of course, at that time, they didn't have the uh, genetically modified corn out there yet, so... She was lucky on that front, being that much old, or being of that age range. So, yeah, make your own baby formula if you can. Get a goat. And finally, number five, it increases intake of unhealthy trans fats. According to a study published in the Journal of Food Lipids, when soybean and canola oils purchased in the U.S. were evaluated, the trans contents were between 0.56% and 4.2% of the total fatty acids. When canola oil undergoes hydrogenation, which, is often, which it often does to become a partially hydrogenated oil, this increases its level of trans fats. These are a group of fats that you want to avoid as much as possible, since they're scientifically known to decrease or to increase LDL cholesterol and lower HDL, which the way my doctor described or explained it to me, HDL is your happy cholesterol and LDL is the bad juju cholesterol. So you want more HDL than LDL. So when you read partially hydrogenated oil on any food label, that guarantees there is some amount of trans fat present this is true even when the label tells you that there is zero trans fats. So how can that be? Well, <clears throat> a serving contains less than 0.5 grams. The company is allowed to indicate that there are no trans fats because it's less than one gram, apparently. Trans fatty acids are hazardous byproducts of food processing and are truly health destroyers. In fact, if you decide to get rid of your canola oil, I would also stop cooking with sunflower or, or excuse me, corn oil, safflower, safflower oil, soy oil, and vegetable oil. I personally uh, use peanut oil, olive oil, and coconut oil. Those are the three oils I use. So, okay, number six. Apparently there is a sixth one. I didn't, I forgot. Excuse me. The numerous potential GMO health side effects, which there have not been any or enough long-term studies 
There was one done in France. I remember reading about it last year, and it was a couple year long study. And it was not happy results. Needless to say, it was not very well publicized over here in the USA. I already mentioned the link between GMOs and negative liver and kidney implications, but it doesn't stop there. According to the Center for Food Safety, there are several new and various serious health concerns and unexpected effects of genetic engineering unearthed by scientific research. Things such as toxicity, allergic reactions, immunosuppression, cancer, and loss of nutrition. So, what's the best? <laughs> oh, the best substitutes for canola oil. Number one, coconut oil. Booyah! It's best when it's cold pressed and virgin. <laughs> that sounds almost naughty. Do not buy refined coconut oil. Your coconut oil should smell like you're on a beach in the Caribbean. It has a high heat threshold and contains medium chain fatty acids that can support both fat loss and your nervous system. Number two, olive oil. Booyah! Often, or people often compare canola oil to olive oil. Well, olive oil wins every day of the week. I don't recommend it as a first option for cooking, but olive oil benefits are tremendous and at the heart of the Mediterranean diet. So look for an organic, extra virgin, or cold pressed olive oil that's available in a darkly colored glass container. Many of the inferior or fake olive oils are mixed with cheaper GMO vegetable oils, so make sure it's GMO free. Olive oil is great in homemade salad dressings and for drizzling on finished products and cooked vegetables. Now, there, uh, number three is ghee or organic pasture raised butter, which I didn't know you could raise butter on a pasture. Being a smart ass. Both butter and ghee products come from alpha lim lipoic acid and coagulated lino linoleic acid. Good God, Dr. Axe. Making me work here. And these can promote weight loss. Booyah! <laughs> Bonus round. Also, they contain healthy short chain fatty acids and have a higher heat threshold. When buying butter, stick with organic grass-fed varieties. Number four, red palm oil. Red palm oil is made from the palm fruit instead of the palm kernel. And it is un, in its unrefined state, it's high in vitamin E and beta carotene. It's also stable under high heat and great for cooking. Just make sure when buying palm oil that it's certified sustainable. If for some reason you must buy canola oil, make sure that it's organic because then it at least can't be from genetically modified plants. He also lists some canola health facts or nutrition facts at the bottom of this and gives the history of canola oil. And let's see. His final thoughts on canola oil are whether the canola oil you've been using is genetically modified or not, you really can't afford to keep using it for the sake of your health. Can be confused, or it can be confusing to know which are the best oils to choose, to cook with, and use at home. But one thing you can bet on is that canola oil is simply not the safe, healthy alternative that the mainstream media would have you believe. Canola oil has become so popular, it's found in many foods, probably because it's cheap, including ones that you may think are healthy food choices. In fact, canola oil is marketed to the health conscious and in health, health conscious industry rather than the junk food industry. However, you must be aware and read labels diligently in order to protect your health and the health of your loved ones. 
So, go ahead and share this bad boy with you. Thank you, Dr. Axe, for not only being very informative, but also straining my brain and my verbal abilities. Okay. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, olive oil and Popeye. <laughs> oh, you're such a goofball, Vinny. Okay. I hear a motorcycle outside. God dang it. Who in the hell's out riding a damn Harley this time of night? And this temperature, it's a wee bit chilly out there. Okay. Now, now that I've ranted and raved and pissed and moaned and groaned, and given you some do not do's, do not do's, let's go with one that's a little bit happier. Okay? I'm feeling, feeling like sharing you things that you should be healthy. Be happy, be healthy, eat well. Mother Nature has provided you with all kinds of wonderful things to eat healthy. And all you got to do is do a little research. Um, the 10 best anti-inflammatory foods to keep on hand. This was, de it's from uh, prevention.com under their food section and it was published February 22nd of 2016. So... I'm just now getting around to it, okay? <laughs> Inflammation has become absolute epidemic. Sure, at its most basic, it's our body's response to outside irritants, a natural part of the immune system without which, holy crap, I forgot to turn something down, didn't I? A <laughs> couple of loud beepers there. Um, da -da 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 -da, our immune system without which our wounds wouldn't heal. But thanks to increasingly high stress levels and an over-reliance on processed foods, many of us are plagued with chronic inflammation. The nasty variety that disrupts the body's natural balance, upping the risk for everything from acne and allergies to intestinal issues, neurological disorders, autoimmune diseases, joint pain, on and on and on and on. So, herbs and spices, yeah, that greenage, mm -hmm, <clears throat> are, are packed with health-promoting phytonutrients. They add complexity to dishes and they take the place of excessive salt or sugar both of which can promote inflammation. Some standout picks are cinnamon, which is, has been shown to reduce bloating and stabilize blood sugar, turmeric, which packs proven anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties, oregano, which has anti, uh, antibiotic properties, and rosemary and lavender, which have been shown to calm anxiety and ease pain. And these are, um, these and other short chain fructo, holy macanoli, I'm not even going to say that. They're SCFOS, such as leeks, asparagus, icky, chicama artichokes, and Jerusalem artichokes are delicious sources of sweet loc um, locale carbs, which, okay, asparagus and artichokes, no, no. Since these foods aren't fully digested in the gut, the remaining material feeds the good bacteria living in our intestines, resulting in a healthier gut. And it's through this process that they boost the immune system and lower inflammation because your gut is vital for your immune system. If you have an unhealthy gut, you are not going to have a healthy immune system. Dark chocolate. 70% cocoa or more may, the, may be the one truly guilt-free dessert. 
Research has shown it improves blood flow, helps reduce blood pressure, and improves the body's response to a carbohydrate uh, heavy metal by improving insulin sensitivity, thereby helping prevent the onset of diabetes if consumed regularly in small quantities or about an ounce per day. So in other words, don't be sitting on the couch eating dark chocolate bonbons all day. One ounce per day is plenty. Avocados boost major benefits, which I do like avocados. Thanks to their star nutrients, mono and polyunsaturated fats, um, phytosterols, alpha-linolenic acid, and carotenoids, whatever those are. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'm going to have to do more research because figure out what the hell some of these words mean. Research shows that avocados reduce inflammation, blood sugar, and cholesterol, and lessen the pain associated with osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. They're even a great replacement for oils and fats. Use mashed avocado wherever you typically spread butter or mayo, which my, my oldest daughter does that, and it really is, depending on what she does it on, quite yummy. Cruciferous veggies, including arugula, bok choy, bro uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, ek, cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens, kale, kohlrabi, mustard greens, and watercress. These vegetables are packed with um, sulfur, sulfur, that, yeah, they're packed with that. <laughs> Sulforaphamine, raffinies, whatever. Please use some words I can pronounce, people. I chose some really duffies tonight. <laughs> these are, um, these offset inflammation by enhancing, um, Haze, oh, oh, by enhancing haze to detoxification in the liver, which, yeah, your liver needs omega-3 omega fatty acids, and your liver also needs CoQ10 in order to process those fatty acids. Multiple studies have also shown that compounds in these vegetables called, uh, yeah, there's compounds in those vegetables that have potent anti-cancer properties. I'm going to share this link so y'all can try and read some of them, their highfalutin, long ass, too many consonants in a row words. <laughs> Shit. How, oh, just when I think I'm going to try and sound intelligent, I have to stumble across these big ass words that I can't pronounce and sound like totally legit. Oh well, I'll keep blodding along. Huh. Anyway, you squeeze it, citrus fruits. Like clementines, grapefruits, lemons, limes, and oranges are health heroes. Due to their high water content, any type of citrus will provide hydration and electrolytes to thirsty bodies. Citrus flavonoids have also been shown to neutralize free radicals, potentially preventing the growth of cancer cells. Their inflammation-fighting properties are found in the skin as well as the juice and flesh. So don't forget to use the zest. And one thing I saw um, not too long ago was to take lemons and freeze them solid. And then, once they're solid, grate them, finely grate them, and then keep that slushy in the freezer. And whenever you, you know, make like... Um, you know, if you want to have some water or something like that, scoop you out a, a tablespoon full of that and put that in your water for a little flavor kick and a healthy boost. So, now I just need to go buy lemons. But you use the whole lemon. Don't worry about taking out seeds or nothing. You need the whole thing. Just freeze it solid and then grate it. Um, organic, grass-fed, free-range animals are healthier, and their meats offer you better nutritional value. In fact, pasture-raised chickens, pigs, lambs, and cows have higher levels of anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids 
and lower levels of pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids than corn-fed animals. A lot of that is because those critters were not designed to consume corn. They were designed to consume grasses. Research even shows less disease among people who opt for meat from grass-fed animals over conventional. Many doctors call eggs the perfect food, one of the few things my mother still cooks. Given their high content of protein, vitamins A and B, and biotin, eggs help offset inflammation because they contain a potent um, carotenoids, um, which are good for vision, as well as choline, which is good for the brain and heart function. The first rule of enjoying these oval powerhouses is to always buy organic and preferably pasture-raised, as these have higher levels of the omega-3 fatty acids. And I just happen to know several people who have chickens, and they sell eggs. And yeah, I tell you what, you get farm fresh eggs, the, the store-bought eggs are just yuck compared to farm fresh eggs. Ideally, adults should eat three servings of cold water fish, such as salmon, sardines, anchovies, and herring, all of which contain low levels of mercury and high amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids. These omega-3 fatty acids have been shown to reduce inflammation and improve heart health, autoimmune conditions, and mood disorders, as well as promote skin and nail health. So, there's a few things to make you feel better. And there's some wonderful links off to the side. And there's actually in their Hot Topics, the top one, I masturbated every day for a week, and here's what happened. No, I'm not going there. Sorry. <laughs> if you guys want to read it, you be my guest. I'll just go ahead and share this link for you. But I think those little compasses are cute, Moosey. I just come back here and saw that you're... Ooh, what is, oh, somebody's having hush puppies. I love hush puppies. Ah, uh, yeah, hush puppies are yummy, especially when they're fried in hot butter. Or, you know, they're actually pretty good when they're fried in peanut oil, too. So, uh, da -da. Don't now. Nah, I don't like the Wranglers, Moosey. I prefer the Compass, and I know someone out here that's that bought a Compass last year, and absolutely, she loves it. Absolutely loves it. So, okay, or not Ranger, a Wrangler. Ranger is a Ford. Dersh. Okay. Ummy nummy good for your tummy. You know, now I'm going to have to make some eggs. Although I have some leftover goulash from last. I made a big pot of goulash. A really big pot last night. And I have leftovers. Yum, yum, yum. Now hers is yellow, Moosey. And I don't care for the yellow, but she really likes yellow. And I'm happy for her. Somebody's got to. Um, so let's see. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I know, I gotta go to this one from Grimmy. Throwback Thursday when doctors prescribed healthy cigarette brands. <laughs> um. Um, Swai, is that how you pronounce that, Grimmy? A Vietnamese catfish. See, I don't like fishing, and I sure as hell don't like cleaning fish. But, you know, once someone else cleans them, oh, hell yeah, I will, I'll cook them. 
I, I'll cook fish, no problem. And I will consume fish. And if you better give me lots of fish to cook, because a lot of times I'll do like little fish nuggets and, you know, dip them in some egg and then dip them in some breading and then fry them in butter and eat half of them before they get to the table. And <laughs> I'm kind of naughty like that. I have a tendency to, well, you know, I tell people that, you know, that way they know I'm not poisoning them because I'm eating half of it to prove to them that they won't die. Ooh, electric blue. That's a pretty color, Moosey. Okay, so what is this? Okay. Back to Grimmy's article. Don't be foolish. Take your doctor's advice. Smoke a fresh cigarette. From the 1930s to the 1950s, advertising's most powerful phrase, doctors recommend, was paired with the world's deadliest consumer product. Not quite. There's a lot of things out there that I think are a lot worse than, than cigs anymore. Wow. Cigarettes weren't seen as dangerous then, but they still made smokers cough. To allay fears, tobacco brands hired throat doctors, that is, models dressed in white coats, to explain that dust, germs, or a lack of menthol were to blame, not the cigs themselves. So while nearly every brand used this dubious marketing approach, including Dunhill, whose doctor claimed you could cut down on smoking while still firing up a pack a day, the prime offender was Camel, which cited that an in incredible study that found more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarettes. It turns out that this independent research was the work of William Etsy Co., R.J. Reynolds' ad agency. And uh, participating doctors were paid with cartons of Camels. So, Cools had the penguin, which was, I remember the Cools penguin. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a list of ads here. Thank you, Grimmy, for that. That was, and yeah, I do remember seeing some of those ads. I remember seeing the billboards, you know, way back in the day. And, you know, they keep telling people, we want you to quit smoking. We want you to quit smoking. You need to stop smoking. Here's a smoking cessation thing that's actually worse for you than the cigarettes themselves. But they want you to keep buying them because they like that tax dollars coming in. In other words, buy them, but don't use them. That's kind of the way they look at it. Oh, hey there, new, I see you. <laughs> okay, let's see. How about I go over and check out the pig? See what happened this date in history, since I only got about a half an hour to go. By the way, y'all need to stick around, because Moose Girl and Grimmy will be on later, or Grimner and Moose Girl, however you want to put that, for the Freaker's Ball. So, yeah, good time will be had by all later on this evening. I believe that is 11... Eastern Time, 10 Central, I think, I think, I think. Okay, so over here on the pig, the word of the day is pihad. What the hell? The invasion of the wrong restroom by the genderly flexible. Alrighty, we are being invaded with a pihad. Oh my God. In the quotable quotes section, NFL arrests. Their games will soon be labeled as work release. That's from Terry T. Thanks, Terry T. Hmm. Okay. Why I'm becoming a liberal. Oh, really? Because I've given up owning a gun, and I know that my local police are all I need to protect me from murderers and thieves. 
because I'm looking forward to more justices on the Supreme Court like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who advocates lowering the age of sexual consent between adults and children to 12 years old. Because I'm looking forward to using the ACLU and the upcoming Obama Supreme Court to allow me to marry whatever I want. As soon as possible, I intend to marry two women, a man, and my dog. Wow. Because I believe oil company profits of 4% on a gallon of gas are obscene, but the government's taxing the same gallon of gas at over 15%, 40% in California isn't. Because I believe the government can do a far better job of spending the money that I earn than I can. Wow, who wrote this, Hambo? Because freedom of speech is fine as long as no one on the left is offended by it. Of course, if I can be as extreme as I like when I attack conservatives, they deserve it. Because I believe that people who can't tell us if it will rain on Friday are absolutely correct when they tell us that the polar ice caps will melt away in 10 years if I don't start driving a Prius. Yeah, that's why I want to become a liberal. Because I'm not concerned about the quiet murder of millions of unborn babies each year, as long as we keep all death row inmates and all Al-Qaeda terrorists alive and well fed. Yep, I'm going to become a liberal because I believe that business should not be allowed to make profits for themselves. They need to break even and give the rest of the to the government for redistribution as it sees fit. I also believe that liberal judges need to rewrite the Constitution every few days to suit some fringe element that would never get their agendas past the voters. Yeah, liberals are people who will never hesitate to use political power to give away anything that they don't own. Author unknown. Now, for this date in history, the 15th of December, 1832, French engineer, a man with towering ambition, Alexander Eiffel was born. And lastly, this date in history, the 15th of December, 1933, a relentlessly funny dude, Tim Conway, born in Willoughby, Ohio. And yeah, I gotta admit, I love Tim. I love Tim. He's funny. I love the Dorf videos and yeah. All kind of fun stuff coming out of Tim Con. And I swear to God, every time you watch like a best of Carol Burnett or something like that, odds are Tim Conway is in there making somebody lose it. It's just the way it works. Um... Let's see here. Check out a few other things here in my pocket. Maybe I don't have. I think I already got to the ones that I meant to this week. So. Oh. Apparently there was an interview conducted on an anon anonymous DIY cell phone network. Cool. How cool is that? It's from motherboard.vice.com. Hmm. Most people in the United States and increasingly around the world carry the most sophisticated surveillance device ever created in their pockets day in and day out. Although smartphones have enabled governments and corporations to track our movements and monitor our conversations with unprecedented ease, these devices are also an incredibly useful personal tool and have become an indispensable part of modern life. It's a crappy trade-off, but evidently one, of the mo one that most of us seem okay with. But Denver Gingrich, a programmer based in New York City, doesn't see why we can't have our smartphones and our privacy too. 
For the past few years, Gingrich has been laying the groundwork for um, Sopranica, which is an open source DIY cell phone network that allows smartphone owners to make calls and send texts and eventually browse the internet with total anonymity. Hmm. For the past, let's see, okay. In January, Gingrich published the code for the first part of Sopranica called JMP, and this is essentially a way of using a secure instant message protocol called XMPP, better known as Jabber, to communicate over voice and text from an anonymous phone number. JMP is the first phrase or first phase of the Sopran... Oh, God. Now I can't even say the damn word. Sopranic. Sopranic. There you go. God dang. Sopranic Network, blah, 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 blah. The next phase, called WAM, will create a physical infrastructure for the cell network with a community radio network. This will essentially involve people hosting small, inexpensive radio devices in their home that plug into their routers to provide internet access to Sopranica users in the area. Ah, if I had better internet, I would consider that. In October, Gingrich presented the first part of his plan for Sopranica at Radical Networks, an annual conference celebrating creative and subversive approaches to the internet. Gingrich said that he and 15 others have been collaborating in a chat room to continue developing the network since its initial launch earlier this year. After hearing about Sopranica during this presentation, I was eager to sign up for the cell network and give it a try. So getting set up with JMP is easy. First you need to create a free and anonymous Jabber ID, which is like an email address. And um, let's see, I'd already created a Jabber ID with the Chaos Computer Club, a German hacking group, but there are a lot of other servers that you can register with as well. The only difference will be the web address in your Jabber ID will be different. For example, motherboard at jabber.ccc.de or motherboard at xmpp.jp. Next, you need to install a Jabber app on your phone. I use an Android and opted for Zaber, which, um, but again, there are plenty of options to choose from. Conversations is a good choice if you want to use Sopranica for picture messaging, for instance. And you'll also need to install Sessions Initiation Protocol, or SIP app, which allows your phone to make calls and send texts over the internet instead of regular cellular networks. For Android users, the best choice is probably um, CSIP Simple, and for iPhones, your best bet is Linphone. Finally, it's time to get your phone number. So if you navigate to Sopranica's JMP website, there's a list of numbers at the bottom, and these phone numbers are generated by Sopranica's Voice Over IP, or VoIP, provider, which provides talk and text services over the Internet. Click whichever number you want to be your new number on the Sopranica network and enter your Jabber ID. A confirmation code should be sent to your phone and will appear in your Jabber app. Once you've entered this code, you're ready to use your new anonymous number. And to do this, use your SIP app and send a text or dial a number just like you would otherwise. This communication will be made through your Sopranica number rather than whichever cell carrier you normally use. Cool! In many ways, GMP is kind of like getting a free VoIP number with Google Voice and then using that number to register for an account on an encrypted messaging platform signal. 
The downside of this, of course, is that VoIP number you get from Google is registered under your name with Google. So even if the people who you communicate with using that number can't trace it to you, Google can. On the other hand, all aspects of JMP are anonymous. Neither the Jabber ID nor the JMP phone number require identification information to register. Cool! So, once he set up his JMP on his phone, the first thing he did was use it to call Gingrich to learn more about how Sopranica works and about his plans for the network's future. <coughs> um, motherboard. So what is the simplest way to describe it? Well, Denver Gingrich, Sopranica uh, says that Sopranica is a project intended to replace all aspects of the existing cell phone network with your freedom respecting equivalents. Taking out all of the baseband firmware on your cell phone, the towers that track your location and the payment methods that track you uh, track who you are and who owns the number and replacing it so you can have the same functionality without having to give up all the privacy that we have to give up right now. At a high level, it's about running community networks instead of having companies control the cell towers that we connect to. So the way it uh, works to prevent protect against surveillance is um, a conventional way of tracking people is with their phone numbers. So the government can, maybe with a warrant, maybe they don't need one, ask the cell carrier to tell them where the person who has this phone number happens to be right now. If you're communicating with someone using your JMP number, your cell carrier doesn't actually know what your JMP number is because that's going over data and it's encrypted. So they don't know that that communication is happening. There's lots of other questions here that I think y'all might find quite interesting. I find it quite fascinating. You might want to check this shit out. Grimmy, you're one of these, you're a grim nerd. Maybe you know about it. Ooh, Moosey, you're going to try a Nissan Rogue? I i don't know what a Nissan Rogue looks like, honey. You're going to have to share a picture of it. Um, all-wheel drive? Uh, to me, front-wheel drive is just as good as all-wheel drive. But that's just me. I don't, I haven't had a problem, and I've had front-wheel drive for years. So, of course, I don't live in Wisconsin or Minnesota. Or I just live out here in the middle of the boonies in Kansas. So, okay, this is just pretty darn cool. Okay, let's see. Fifteen minutes left. What do I have I can get into? What kind of trouble can I get into? Hmm. Okay, Dr. X. Oh, I know. I know what that is. Let me check this. It's my my most recent pages I've been to. Mm hmm. Let's see. From I'm looking over here on us.zen.yandex.com. And, uh, ooh, one embarrassing photo shuts down Ted Cruz's argument against net neutrality, and it's on the Huffington Post. Let's see what that is, shall we? Huh. Apparently, um, oh, shush. Don't be starting on me. Apparently, Senator Ted Cruz on Thursday tried to mock supporters of net neutrality 
the rule repealed by FCC that had required Internet service providers to treat all traffic equally. It didn't go well, though, because critics warned the repeal would lead to ISPs charging extra for access to certain websites or even block them completely. And Cruz had an imaginary argument in which the concerns of a quote-unquote snowflake are shut down by an informed observer, such as himself. And in his little blurb, Snowflake believing online propaganda, oh my god, without net neutrality, the internet will be gone. But informed observer let them know, you know, the FCC issued that rule in 2015. The internet grew up wonderfully free from government regulation. And this restores the status quo. Snowflake, uh, never mind. Uh-huh. Well, a journalist and historian, Eon Higgins, fired back with a tweet that used just 10 words and a photo illustrating the kinds of traffic that could be slowed by stopping or slowed or stopped by ISPs. Um, and the, hmm, I'm not going to click on the pic, but uh, his response was, Ted, let me put the issue as succinctly as possible. Apparently, the photo is a scene showing porn star Corey Chase in a hardcore flick, Moms Bang Teens 20, which infamously earned a like from Cruz's Twitter account earlier this year. Cruz insisted the like was caused by a staffer with access to his account. It was an honest mistake. It wasn't malicious. It wasn't deliberate, Cruz told CNN's Dana Bash. It was a screw-up. Uh, was there a pun intended there? Apparently, a previous version of this story misstated the last name of Eon Higgins. Oh, well... That was that little correction that they had to do. But, oh, darn it, Ted. I hate when your staff clicks something. You know, that could be taken in multiple ways as well. <laughs> What's that? I have no idea. Did I get net neutered? No, I did not, Flash Nasty. I have not been net neutered. Not yet. Because you can't neuter a girl. Duh. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Where else shall I go? That was kind of funny. Um, let's see. This one is from the Federalist Papers. I wonder if I'll have time for it. Hilarious. New York Times op-ed about net neutrality blocked by a paywall. <laughs> From the federalspapers.org. As net neutrality supporters continue to break down over the reversal of the regulatory scheme, we're finding all sorts of irony in their responses. From the screeching about a few bureaucrats controlling our lives to the outlandish idea that the Internet is changed as we know it forever, it's just beyond ridiculous hyperbolic. Left-wing media outlets are up in arms, along with their supporters, in response to the FCC's decision to end net neutrality. The New York Times ran an op-ed from an Asian Studies doctor doctoral candidate titled, What If You Couldn't See This Page? Well, one need not consider the what if, because the New York Times decided to make the article a paid access story only, blocking non-subscribers from reading the article. And I guess they got lost in the irony. The Daily Caller reports that the paywall ironically blocked people from being able to see the content of the article, as the article was attempting to claim the ISPs would be the ones blocking access to content, 
Well, see, it's bad when they do it, but when we do it because we want to make a profit, well, that's okay. Apparently, net neutrality is a nebulous concept, generally meaning that all internet traffic should be treated equally. Specifically, among other aspects, it means broadband providers like Comcast and Verizon can't favor their own content over that of others and can't offer faster speeds to higher paying customers nor block access to certain features. Oh, can't offer faster speeds to higher paying customers. Ha, huh, I wonder what that's going to do to my internet access. Ha. Huh. But many do not apply this simple principle equally to other industries. The aforementioned New York Times op-ed, for example, can only be accessed through a paid subscription once the maximum number of free of charge articles have expired. Hmm, imagine that. They require a paid subscription to access an article on the idea that the content could be blocked unless you pay. Huh, how funny is that? Apparently the whole concept that infinite free distribution would solve all the business problems associated with journalism and there'd be a perfect way to match news to users has just turned out to be wrong. New York Times CEO Mark Thompson said in a digit Digit Day interview published on Thursday that there is demonstrably a market for high quality news for paying customers. Okay, so they're basically admitting that paying for access is not as problematic as everyone is making it out to be. And maybe it's actually a good thing if that payment goes in their pocket, don't you know? It's almost as if exchange of currency for a good or service is how the entire economy works. Who to thunk? Now the article is now accessible even without a subscription. It's possible that the Times reacted to backlash from users who didn't want to pay for it. In other words, the free market solved the problem. Up yours. So here's the ultimate problem underlying the entire debate about net neutrality. Many of the supporters of net neutrality are so vehement in their support because they implicitly assume that internet access is a human right. They are afraid of having to pay for something that they consider to be a human right. Well, in the same way that they believe health care should be free and education should be free, they are all but saying that the internet access should be free as well unless they want to charge you. Sure, they still pay the ISP for the internet connection, but the idea of paying to access certain kinds of content on the internet, well, even if it requires a lot of bandwidth, which the ISP has to produce, they hate it because be they believe that they are entitled to internet access. This isn't every single supporter of net neutrality, of course. You know, some have raised concerns over the idea that ISPs can throttle connections in very well thought out ways, which that's happening out here. I still argue against the regulatory scheme because I'm more open to market innovation than simply deferring to government coercion to achieve something they consider desirable. Maybe we could let the market innovate. Stop making it illegal for other ISPs to compete in the marketplace. Where there is competition, there is downward pressure on prices and upward pressure on quality. So how about we let people freely acting, using their creativity and innovation to solve any issues that arise such as this. Let's think outside the little government box, please. I like that. I like that. Think outside the government box. What a wonderful idea. 
Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on a Freaker Friday evening, and yeah, I've been kind of off on a tangent and been reading all kind of healthy and bad for you and, I think, interesting things. Be sure to stick around because Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening with the Freakers Ball. Tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, I will be on here with Flash Rooney Dork. And we will be doing the dork table. And basically, yeah, Flash is doing the dork table. And I'm playing along and giving him shit is basically the way it works. Also, probably Saturday afternoon, I hope, or at least afternoon for me, JJ's will be jumping in and be playing some tunage for you. I'm sure he will because JJ just loves to jump in and play tunage. Then Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner will be jumping on and playing the blues for you. And I'm sure there'll be a rousing game of Trivial Pursuit going in the RLM chat. That's always a good time had by all. Then Sunday afternoon at, uh, is it 3 or 2? Two? 3 Eastern Time. It's 2 my time. Directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony. And he's going to take you behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop-ass on yo-ass. Also, Sunday evening, Gary L. and Gigi's Boo, 7 o'clock Eastern Time with The Road Less Traveled. I will be back. Well, okay, tomorrow I'll be here. And then I'll be back on Wednesday for a regular edition of the Wackadoodle Wednesday Rocket Chair. But until then, have an absolutely amazing rest of your Freaker Friday. And I will catch up with you later on the flip side in the funny papers whatever wherever i run into you you might want to run away you never know in any case have an awesome evening and remember i really do love you all may not like y'all